All right, good morning. My name is Dr. Elena Gillespie and I am here with Saybrook University in our mindfulness moments. And I was just mentioning to my colleagues that we're gonna do something a little different today. We are going to talk about an event that happened to me when I was questioning the source and, and purpose of music as a unique attribute and quality that we have. And um, it involves um, Louis Armstrong. And this happened years and years ago. So I want you to get comfortable and just in a receptive frame of mind, you don't have to let any or make anything happen. You can just let it happen and um, just focus on your body and relaxing in the chair and allow your body to relax from the feet all the way up. Just allow universal energy in. All right, and all the way up through your torso and your shoulders and your arms and down through your fingers and up, up through your neck and then your head and the top of your head. And I want you to surround yourself with a white light shield. Make it quite large, quite spacious. All right, six feet around. And all, so you're in a column of light. And this happened a few years, but quite honestly, about a decade or so. And like I said, I was questioning what the source and purpose of music was. And I was very interested in jazz at the time because jazz is, is a lot of jazz is improvisation. And it is truly speaking from the soul. Um, and out into the universe and out into all that is. And Louis Armstrong is credited with the development of jazz, although I think it was a message that was handed to him from the universe. Um, but in any case, I was in Michigan at the time and I was at the University of Michigan and that has a lot of neat events that have happened around during that, you know, at the university. And there was, um, Ken Burns was going to come and speak. And most of you know who he is. He's a filmmaker. He's not really a documentarian, but he is a commentarian really on our, a lot of different uh, aspects of American culture. And he had done a, documentary or a, a, like I said, a commentary on the origins and development of jazz. And um, he came to the university and I need to explain the layout of the place a little bit. Of course, we were sitting in the audience, it was an auditorium and there was a stage and Ken Burns is really so very tiny. He's really only about five foot one or two. Uh, they couldn't really put him on the stage with a lectern because nobody would be able to see him. So they put him actually on a lectern in front of the stage so that we were more eye level with him. And even then he really only had his head over the lectern. He's not a very tiny man. And he talked at length about um, making this this film about the development of jazz from the 1920s or so. And he began and always circled back to Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong was a trumpeter and again, developed the, um, the tradition of what's called scatting, which is uh, improvisation in jazz. And it's truly just speaking from, speaking from the soul. Um, out into the universe. And there are other musicians who also felt the same way about it. John Coltrane um, was another one. And, um, and then another one whose name escapes me, it'll come back to me. But um, in any case, he always circled back. And jazz musicians are quite emotional and quite volatile and they can be. Um, but he talked about, uh, they're very emotional frequently and that's the basis of the music. But in any case, so I'm watching him speak. I was absolutely driven to go to this talk because I wanted to know what did he think the source of music was 
and he he was inter it was interesting. Um, I, so we're sitting there. I'm sitting there watching him speak, and he again always circled back to Louis Armstrong, and the joy and the love he had for everybody, and including those who did not treat him well either, and uh, but always held his dignity. And um, so I'm sitting there watching him speak, and I have what's I I don't know how they're induced exactly. I think they're gifts from the universe. Uh, there are various authors that call them different names. Um, Michael Winkleman calls an immediate transport to an altered, to an astral level as a warp. Um, and I think it's a useful name because quite honestly, it's instantaneous, um, but you are now seeing on another level. And you're seeing, it's, it's odd to explain it, but you can see the real world, the one that we agree on, the consensual reality. And then you can see other realities as well at the same time overlaid this one. And as I'm listening to him speak, there were maybe 50 people in the audience and we were all scattered around this rather large auditorium. Um, so I'm listening to him speak and on the stage behind him, as he's talking about Louis Armstrong, um, I'm seeing an image, but it's a living image, create itself or develop itself on the stage. And it's about 12 feet tall, it's pretty large. And I can see it filling out. And it's, I first see, the cheeks and Louis Armstrong, his, his nickname was Satchmo and which is Satchel Mouse. And quite honestly, you had to have a very large um, um, oral cavity, so to speak, to play trumpet and a lot, and a lot of muscular strength. And he, so he always looked you know, like a chipmunk or something because he was always blowing very hard, but I can see a being and he is blowing a horn and I see him fill out and he's got this magnificent, beautiful, tan, dark, caramel, chocolate skin. And I can see it and I can see him filling out. Um, and then I can see the development of shoulders and I can see um, this magnificent, beautiful, iridescent blue and white and gold and rainbow gown developing all the way down to the floor. And there are wings that encompass the stage. They are that large. They are easily 30 feet across. And every single aspect, every uh, pixel, I guess, but it's a living pixel. Every speck of it was conscious. So the feathers on the wings actually had consciousness. They moved individually and so did the gown. The gown was very, very um, volatile. I guess the word is it kept moving and it was iridescent and this creature, and it's Louis Armstrong and he's blowing his trumpet, but he's speaking through this music and I can hear it. And he is saying, this, and he was talking about Ken Burns, and he was saying, this is my son. I am so proud of him. He's gotten what I was trying to say. This is what music is all about. Music is, it's the, mu the message is very simple. It's love and love and unity. And it is our speaking to the universe. And I came to, it was all came to me in a rush. And of course, this, this creature on the stage is so magnificent. I am on my knees in between, you know, my seat and the row of seats next to me. I'm, I'm crying and laughing at the same time because that's the only reaction you can possibly have to this. And the person near me must have thought I was just out of my mind. But um, I'm listening to the music, which is speaking to me and how proud he was of Ken Burns. And 
Ken Burns paradoxically at the same time was talking about a psychic medium that he had gone to and that had given him the same message from Louis Armstrong. And I was just stunned speechless. I, I couldn't even, like I said, I was crying and laughing at the same time. And the talk, I was sitting there watching this and I finally, the talk was over and we, we ended up going to like an after party or whatever it was. And I debated whether to tell him or not. And I just thought, oh my gosh, this guy is going to think I'm just nuts. Um, but I chose to, I thought, well, you know, I may as well. He'd gone to a medium, so I guess he's somewhat open to it. Um, so I managed to go over to him and, and talk to him. And I told him what I had seen. And we both got tears in our eyes. And I said, this is how proud he is of you. And he was like, I felt like he was around. I felt like he was around when I was doing this documentary. documentary. And I said, well, he was. And so in any case, I am, and there's a lot of different ways of looking at music from a cultural standpoint. And every culture has got a slightly different take on it, but their sacred musics are all of the same message. And it's all very, very simple. It is the universe's love for us and our ability to respond to that impression but that is a story I have not even bothered to write down. Uh, perhaps someday I will. But it's just God's or un the universe's awareness of us and our place in all of that. So I, I wish I could convey the magnificence of the gift I was given to see this because it was truly. A, a momentous image, and I cannot replicate it here. Um, but every, I learned so much from all of that, from, from just watching this magnificent archangel, whatever this was, and how he ha had assumed that role here on earth as, and as a gift to all of us. So I want you to just try and I'm hoping that you can get some sort of feeling from that and what exactly music is. And every musician has this to a greater or lesser degree is the ability to transmit that message and elevate us in hearing it. So I know it's probably a little bit early, but I think I'm just going to let everyone just sit for a minute or two and think about that and think about music that has elevated you. And there was a mechanism by which that occurred. So let's take a deep breath and relax. and think about the connection between all of us and the universe and how it shows its attachment to us always. All right, we're going to wind that up. And I want you to walk through the day and the week with that 
idea that we are interconnected to everything. We are not separate from it. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes.